Hello everyone, my name is Blue Cool Knox, and welcome to episode 2 of the Logo Evolution series. Last time, we looked at Warner Home Video, which is the home media releasing arm of Warner Bros. We'll talk about Warner Bros. Pictures another time, as today we're talking about one of the biggest film studios in the 1920s, which is still going strong today. They also own United Artists and Orion Pictures. I'm talking about Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Metro Goldwyn Mayer Studios Incorporated, to give you their full name, originally started out as three separate companies Metro Pictures Corporation, Goldwyn Pictures Corporation, and Lewis B. Mayer Pictures Corporation. I'll give you the background information of all three companies before we get into the logos, so here we go. Metro Pictures Corporation was founded in 1915 by Richard A. Rowland and Lewis B. Mayer, the same man who formed his own film corporation three years later. Metro Pictures started out distributing films by Solax Studios. After Mayer left, Richard would continue to produce films in New York City, Fort Lee, New Jersey, and Los Angeles. In 1920, Metro Pictures was purchased by Marcus Lowe as a supplier for his theater chain. Goldwyn Pictures Corporation was founded by Samuel Goldfish, or Samuel Goldwyn, in 1916 in partnership with Edgar and Archibald Selwyn using an amalgamation of both surnames to create the name. In the 1920s, Marcus Lowe purchased Goldwyn Pictures as another supplier for his theater chain. Lewis B. Mayer Pictures Corporation was formed in 1918 by, of course, Lewis B. Mayer. That's all the info I could get about Lewis B. Mayer Pictures, so moving on. As I just said a few minutes ago, Marcus Huo bought out Metro Pictures and Goldwyn Pictures to supply films for his theater chain. Because of Marcus Huo needing to oversee his Hollywood operations, he bought out Louis B. Mayer Pictures in 1924 to form MGM as we know it today. However, films in the early years start out as Louis B. Mayer presents a Metro Goldwyn picture. Now we can get into the logos, starting with Metro Pictures. The logo looks like this. The CLG Wiki doesn't have an official nickname for this logo, but after a close analyzation, I have now decided to call it the Cardinal. It was used from 1915 to around 1916. If anyone has restored a film from Metro at the time of this logo's usage, let me know, because I would love to see this logo on film. Moving on to Goldwyn Pictures Corporation. The first logo from Goldwyn looks like this. I call it Original Wheel the Lion, and it was used from 1916 to 1923. There is a variant in sepia tone. This logo is quite nice for its time. In my opinion, the original wheel looks cute, and I prefer this one over the next logo's lion. The next logo looks like this. It's called the Still Lion. It was seen in 1921, and it was seen again in 1993. This logo is kind of creepy to me. It's probably because of the design of that mask. Watching this logo in the dark might not be the best suggestion for you viewers out there. The next logo is this. It's called the Slightly Roaring Lion, and it was used from 1923 to 1924. There is a variant in sepia tone, like the second logo of this video. Mm -hmm. 
the lion in this photo could possibly be slats, but we're not sure yet. Considering the lions have a 10 to 14 year lifespan, it would make sense if the lion is slats in this logo, but I digress. Nonetheless, this logo is good for its time. Anyway, now we move on to Louis B. Mayer Pictures Corporation. The only logo I could find from them was this. This logo doesn't have a nickname on the CLG wiki, but I've called it the Eagle. It was used from 1918 to 1924. An interesting choice for Louis B. Mayer Pictures' logo, to be fair. What else can I say? But now we move on to Metro Goldwyn Pictures Corporation. Their logo looked like this. It's called the Lion Statue, and it was used from 1924 to around 1928. Although I wasn't able to get footage of the normal version, I did find footage of this logo in sepia. It's okay, but I think the circle around the metro text is a bit unneeded. It's a bit of a weird design with that circle there. Now we move on to Metro Goldwyn Mayer Pictures, the main company this video is on. Their first logo looks like this. I call it Slats the Lion, and it was used from November the 9th of 1924 to April the 22nd of 1928. I have two variants. One has slats looking different ways, and was in sepia tone, with Jackie plastered over slats in a quite nice plastering job, I might add. This logo is quite nice, and Slats looks good in this age, no matter how old he was at the time of this logo. Jackie's variant was a bit strange to see, but at least it got the job done. Anyway, the next logo looks like this. This logo is called the Unknown Lion, and it was used from October the 1st of 1927 to September the 27th of 1928. Since films from this era are being restored on other sites, this logo should be able to be restored as well. Now allow me to explain what's going on with the COG wiki. On the site, it says the second logo from Metro Goldwyn Mayer is Jackie the Lion, which was introduced on September the 1st of 1928, and the third logo is the Unknown Lion. But this one was introduced before Jackie, so why are they swapped around? Well, it's only a minor oversight, nothing major. Anyway, on to the next logo, which looks like this. It's called Jackie the Lion, and it was used until October the 13th of 1953. I have seven versions. Five of them are in black and white. One has no roar with the opening theme to the film. One has Jackie's early roar. One has Jackie's common roar. One has the opening theme to the film with Jackie's roar in tow. One has the Silver Anniversary title card before the logo begins, also with the opening theme to the film and Jackie's Roar. One is in sepia tone. one is in color. I quite like this logo because of Jackie's common roar. 
The power in the roars might excite or scare some people, depending on what your opinion is on these logos. Also, he was nicknamed Leo the Lucky because he has survived several accidents. Train wrecks, an earthquake, and a freaking explosion inside of the studio! He was so lucky back then, now wasn't he? Moving on to the next logo. It looks like this. It's called Telly the Lion, and it was used from November the 2nd of 1928 to October the 15th of 1932. Four versions this time. Three are in color. One has the full roar. One has a shortened roar. One has no roar, but with the opening theme to the film... And one version is in black and white. The only downside to this logo is that Telly doesn't use a different roar, but uses Jackie's roar instead. But apart from that, nice logo for the H. The next logo looks like this. It's called Coffee the Lion, and it was used from 1932 to May the 25th of 1935. <laughs> There is an extended version. The name Coffee can be a bit strange to some people. Why would you name your lion Coffee? That's kind of weird to me, honestly. The next logo looks like this. It's called Tanner the Lion, and it was used from September the 18th of 1934 to December the 3rd of 1953. Two versions for this logo. One has the opening theme to the film with a short roar. And one has no opening theme, but has extended roars. Tanner is pretty tied up with Jackie in terms of popularity. If you grew up watching Tom and Jerry, you would probably consider him a favorite as well. On July the 17th of 1953, MGM brought back Jackie and dropped the marquee in the logo. The result of the new logo looks like this. I call it Jackie and Tanner, and it was used until 1956. There's two versions for this logo. On black and white films, Jackie would have the logo, and on color films, Tanner would have the logo. It's quite cool for the time, with two versions of a logo being used on different versions of films, black and white, and color. Jackie making a reappearance must have been cool too. Moving onwards. On July the 17th of 1956, MGM brought in a new lion named George. The logo containing him looks like this. You can probably guess the nickname now that I think about it. This logo was used until 1958, and was seen again on March the 19th of 1963. I have three versions for this logo. One is in black and white. And two are in color. One is on a black background. And one is on a blue background. This logo is quite good for its time in my opinion. George looked a bit scary for me at first, but I shook that feeling off like it was nothing. Now we've come to the current lion, Leo. The logo he was in looks like this. Again, you can probably guess the nickname. The logo was used from July the 18th of 1957 to July the 10th of 1987, so that's 20 years. 
minus a week and a day. I have five versions this time. One is in black and white. And the other four are in color. One is the original roar, and one has electronically produced roars. Two have the words MGMUA Entertainment Co. above the ribbons. One has the words from the previous version. And one just has the opening theme to the film and no roars. This logo is great for its time. The fact that Leo is still in the current logo for MGM makes this logo better in my opinion. This logo would have been upgraded on May 23rd of 1974, but we have one less exciting logo to go through first. The logo looks like this, it's called the Stylized Lion, and it was used from April 3rd to October 13th of 1968, and it was used again from around 1977 to 1981. I have three versions of this logo. One has the logo in white on a teal green background. One is on a blue background with the arrangement in yellow, and the yellows MGM are larger. And one is on a black background with the arrangement of the logo at the top with extra text saying an MGM presentation, and has the United Artists Transamerica T logo beneath, with text reading released through the United Artists, a Transamerica company. I wasn't able to get video footage of this one, however. In my opinion, this logo really isn't all that interesting. It's just a still image of an abstract lion in a circle. Even as far as abstract logos go, this feels like a wasted effort. The next logo brought back the lion we all know and love for MGM's Golden Anniversary, making this. It's called Golden Anniversary, and it was used from May the 23rd of 1974 to July the 4th, 1975. I like the fact that this logo has golden colored text at the top and sides. It really suits this special milestone for MGM. The next logo celebrates MGM's 60 year milestone. It looks like this, it's called Diamond Jubilee, and it was used from July the 20th of 1984 to January the 18th of 1985. There's two versions for this logo. One has the Diamond Jubilee and 60 years of great entertainment text in white. <laughs> And what is the same, but with the Diamond Jubilee and 60 years of great entertainment text in a light blue color. Quite nice, I must say. Leo's electronically produced roars are quite popular nowadays, as the next logo uses them as well. This next logo is also infamously known for plastering older logos. The logo looks like this. It's called the King of the Plasters, and it was used from November the 26th of 1986 to April the 28th of 2009. I have five versions. One has no byliner URL. One has the MGM UA Communications byline, with the logo playing after the MGM UA Communications logo. <laughs> One has the URL below the logo. One is the 70th anniversary version. <laughs> and 
and what is the 75th anniversary version? This logo, although good for its time, is the most annoying to come across when searching for old MGM films that have an older logo on it, because this logo plasters the older ones, making it impossible to find rarer variants of older MGM logos. Luckily, the next logo isn't as annoying as this one. It looks like this, it's called Modern Lion, and it was used from November the 14th of 2008 to March the 16th of 2012. I like this logo a little more than the previous one, because it's not as plaster hungry. On August the 8th of 2012, for their next and final logo, MGM hired Shine Studios to render 3D animation from the ground up. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present, The Lion's Eye. There is a darker version where the ribbons are more golden. Hey, that's pretty good! Now that is how you do a logo right. This logo has been a mainstay of MGM's history for almost seven years now. The zooming from the eye, the ribbons moving into position, the shining on the Metro Goldwyn mirror text, those qualities make this logo so much better than the previous two logos. This is the best Metro Goldwyn mirror logo by far, and I hope MGM continues to use this in 2020. Overall, Metro Goldwyn mirror has an interesting history. They've had some ups and some downs, but they still hold strong, even today. If it weren't for Leo the Lion, MGM would have never been as popular as it is today, and I'm looking forward to seeing what MGM has for us in the future. Before we end the video, I just want to tell you that if you haven't seen it yet, I have a new Discord server. The link to the Discord server is in the description of this video and on my channel's main page. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all later. Till then!